Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read uh, S5 5072 Junie B first grader one man band part B. You know what, Sheldon? I think that's a fine idea, he said. In fact, I think a, a little halftime entertainment would be excellent. Sheldon clapped some more. Yeah, I'll start practicing it as soon as I get home, he said. Mr. Scary smiled again. Then he raised his eyebrows and he looked back at me. So, Junibi, what do you think? If Sheldon does a halftime show, would you like to be in it too? He asked. I bet playing an instrument wouldn't be too hard on your sore toe. Now, I'm sure Sheldon would be happy to have another band member. I did a, a loud groan, then I put my head back on my desk and I covered up with my sw a sweater again. Chapter 5 Lemonade. After school, Mr. Scary called my mother at her work and he told her that I got disappointed about the tournament. That's how come for dinner at that night, mother made my favorite meal of spaghetti and meatball. Plus she and daddy tried to be extra nice to me. I know you're upset about not being in the kickball game, but everyone has disappointments in life, honey. I was still in a bad mood. I hate disappointments. I hate them. Daddy patted me. Yeah. Well, we all hate being disappointed, Juni B. He said, but Mr. Scary said you can still do something fun in the tournament. I did a mad breath. I hate that dumb tournament. I hate it. Said Daddy squinted his eyes at me. He said to please stop saying hate. I hate saying hate. I hate it. I said. After that, Daddy picked me up and he carried me to my room for the timeout. It was not unexpected. I waited till he was gone. I hate timeout. I hate them. I whispered to my stepdaddy for name, the Philip Johnny Bob. I hate them too, Jenny B. He said back. I hate everything you hate. You and me hate everything exactly the same. I hugged him very tight. I loved that guy. After that, both of us flopped on my bed. And we calmed ourselves down. Pretty soon, mother came and got me, and she took me back to the table. I did not talk to daddy. Also, I did not talk to my baby brother named Ali, because he's always just learning words, and all he keeps saying is, move. Mother, try to be nice some more. Are you sure you wouldn't like to be a cheerleader, Junibi? I know you couldn't jump up and down on your sort of, but you could still yell and shout for your team. Daddy did a chuckle, and yelling and shouting are right up your alley. He teased. I did not laugh at that remark. Daddy poked me. Oh, don't be so glum, he said. Being a cheerleader wouldn't be so bad, would it? Every little girl likes cheerleading. I rolled my eyes at the ceiling. But I'm not every little girl, Daddy. I'm just me, Junie B. Jones, and I don't want to be a cheerleader. I want to be on the kickball team. Just then my nose started to sniffle very much. I even had a daydream about it. I was the star of the whole entire game. It was very wonderful. Only now that it's never going to happen. Mother gave me a hug. Well, no one can be a star all the time. She said, it's just like I said earlier. Everyone has disappointments sometime. Right, and when life hands you lemons, you have to learn to make lemonade. I looked weird at that man. Huh? I said, what's lemonade got to do with this? Mother smiled. It's just a saying. Junie B, it means that when life goes a little bit sour, you need to find a way to sweeten it up a bit. Just then, Daddy went to the refrigerator and he took out three lemons. Here, look, I'll show you. He said, he held up the lemons for me to see. See what I have here? They're just three sour old lemons, right? I did a shrug. I guess so. Daddy green. Ah, but maybe these sour lemons are more fun than they look, he said. Then one by one, he threw each lemon into the air. And wow, he started to juggle them. I mean it. He did. My daddy juggled those lemons way high in the air. And I didn't even know that he had that talent. I clapped and cheered, very thrilled. Ali clapped too. And also he said moo, then all of us started to laugh. Daddy did a bow. Do you see what I mean now? I turned three sour lemons into something more fun. And you can do the same thing, Junibi. All you have to do is think of something fun to do in the kickball tournament. And then your sour situation will turn happy too. Understand? I nodded very fast. I do, mother. I do understand, I said. And guess what else? I think I already know what I'm going to do. I jumped down from my chair and I picked up the lemons from the counter. I think I'm going to juggle. I said, very joyful. I juggle in Sheldon's halftime show. 
and then everyone will clap and cheer and I'll be the star of that whole production after that. I stood in the middle of the kitchen just like my daddy did. One by one, I threw each lemon into the air. I kept my eyes on them, very perfect. Only too bad for me because two of them crashed into the table. Plus the other one hit Ali in the head. He started to cry. I patted him real fast. Then I quick picked up the lemon and I hurried up to my room. Because juggling was going to take a little practice apparently and there were only three days left. Until Friday, chapter 6, practicing. Wednesday, dear first grade journal. Last night, daddy helped me practice my juggling. I kept on throwing those lemons into the air. And they kept on crashing into my floor. Finally, I got frustration in me and I threw them as high as I could. First one cracked my ceiling light. The next one fell on my bed and knocked out my raggedy NDA named Larry. Lemons are not as easy as they look. Friday is only two more days away. I'm getting stress in me. As soon as I finished writing, Mr. Scary walked to the front of the room and he asked us to put away our journals. Boys and girls, there are a few more things I need to tell you about the kickball tournament on Friday. For one thing, today and tomorrow, we'll be taking extra long recess periods to get ready. He looked around the class. Those of you playing on the team will be practicing on the softball field. And those of you who are cheerleaders will be practicing on the sidelines, he told us. Camille and Chanel jumped right up from the desk seat. Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary, we have good news, said Camille. Yes, we do, said Chanel. Our mother was a cheerleader in college, and last night she taught us some cheers. Right, said Camille. And so today, Chanel and I can teach them uh, to the other girls. Mr. Scary smiled very pleased. That's excellent news, girls. I'll put you two in charge of teaching the cheers. Then I'll have more time to work with the kickball team and the halftime show. He looked back in my direction. Oh, and speaking of the halftime show, have you made a decision about what you want to do yet, Jenny B? I started to nod real happy. All of a sudden, I stopped. On account of what, I, on account of what if I told room one that I was going to juggle in the halftime show? When I still couldn't learn that talent by Friday, then some of the children might shout boo at me. Plus, others might laugh at, laugh, laugh and laugh. I tapped on my desk, barely thinking. But on the other hand, maybe... I should just tell my class the whole entire truth because mother says the truth is always bad. Only that's not the truth, of course, but maybe this one time the truth might be the easiest. Junie B said my teacher again. I stood on my, at my desk and I looked at my room one in the, their eyes. Okay, here's the whole entire truth. I said, I'm trying to learn how to juggle for Sheldon's halftime show. Only please do not get your hopes up, people, because I may be... I maybe might not learn it in time, and so if I don't juggle at halftime, there's no laughing or booing allowed, and I mean it. I quick sat back down again. Lenny and Herb turned around in their seat. Wow, you're learning to juggle? That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. I wish I could juggle. May rolled her eyes. I don't, she said. What's so fun about throwing stuff in the air? And anyway, juggling is only for the circus. Whoever heard of juggling in a halftime show? I wrinkled my eyebrows, very serious. Hmm, that's a good question, May. Let me think, I said. Then I, I leaned real close to her face. Me, that too, I said. Lenny and Herb laughed very hard. Then Sheldon looked back at me. He gave me a happy thumbs up. I smiled, because what do you know? This time, the truth worked beautifully. Chapter 7. The fun with me and Sheldon. At recess, Mr. Scary got the kickball team started on their practice. Then he came over to Sheldon. And me, and he helped. He helped us with a halftime show. First, he gave me a, a wood block from the music teacher's room. Plus, also he gave me a drumstick. If you hit this wood block while you march, you and Sheldon will be able to stay in step. He explained. I smiled very thrilled, cause hitting step is right up my alley. I whacked that thing with my drumstick. Then Sheldon crashed his cymbals together and ha! That was beautiful music. After that, Mr. Scary told us to form a line behind him. And then all three of us marched around and around the playground. Guess what? My wood block kept us in step very perfect. After a while, we marched over to a microphone. It was on a stand in the grass. This is where you're going to sing, Sheldon. When you sing into the microphone, the whole audience will be able to hear you. Mrs. Scary smiled. We won't turn it on yet, but you can still practice your song. Okay? Okay, says Sheldon, real thrilled. He stood up straight and tall. He walked over to the microphone. He started to sing, Hark, 
Hello, the angels sing. He played the cymbals while he sang. It was very lovely, sort of, but Mr. Scaredy Face didn't look delighted. He held up his hand. Uh, could you hold it a second there, Sheldon? Could you stop singing for a minute, please? Sheldon stopped. Mr. Scaredy walked over to the microphone. Okay, well, that's a very nice Christmas carol, Sheldon. And you are singing it beautifully, but the trouble is, it really isn't Christmas, is it? So I'm wondering if maybe you know a different song, Sheldon, though, for a minute. How about I have a little a try it all? Yes, I know that one. Mr. Scary ran his finger through his tired hair. Yeah, that's sort of the same problem, isn't it? It's not really Hanukkah either. Do you know any songs beside holiday songs? Or is there some other talent you have, Sheldon? Like, can you whistle maybe or do a magic trick? Sheldon, does some more. I can blow milk bubbles out of my nose. But that mostly only happens when I'm choking. Mr. Scary start, started rubbing the sides of his hair. He was getting another headache in there, I think. All of a sudden, Sheldon's whole face lighted up. Hey, wait. I just thought of another song I could sing. Happy birthday, Mr. Scary. I know all the words to happy birthday. And that isn't even a holiday song. Our teacher stood there the second and he nodded his head. Happy birthday would be just dandy. Sheldon started his performance all over again. He sang the song, played the cymbal, very good. After he got done, he did a somersault. I do not know why. Then, hooray, hooray, it was finally time for me. I quick put down my wood block. I reached into my pocket and took out my pretend lemon. I started to pretend I was juggling. Juggling for pretend is way easier than juggling for real. I skipped and twirled and danced. Mr. Skitty and Sheldon clapped and clapped. I did a bow. Then I picked up my wood block again. I hit it with my stock, stick. And me and Sheldon marched off the field. We jumped all around and did a high five. Sheldon picked me up and tried to twirl me around. Only he wasn't actually strong enough, and so mostly I just dragged on my toe. His face turned reddish and sweaty. He put me down and wiped his head with his sleeve. Phew, you're a ton girl. He said, I did a smile. I like that old odd boy. I really do. Chapter 8, Half Time. Thursday, dear first grade general. Yesterday, when I got home from school, daddy was waiting for me. He had bought me a juggle book at the bookstore. It was for children six and up. Six and up is my exact age. Daddy and I read each page. Very careful. Then I did a whole entire book, step by step. And what do you know? After I got done, I still couldn't juggle. I'm getting fed up with this stupid talent. Daddy said, maybe I will learn it tomorrow. That man is just kidding himself. I'm doomed. From Juni B. I closed my journal and I watched the ch clock for the rest of the afternoon because I just wanted to get home and practice some more. Daddy came home from work to help me again. Tried to help me juggle for hours and hours and hours. Only the most I could ever juggle was two dumb lemons and two dumb lemons is not even juggling. Two dumb lemons is just throwing lemons in the air and catching them. I'm not going to school tomorrow and I'm in mean it. I'm at school, I don't know what went wrong. I kind of this morning, I told my mother I broke my leg. Then I limped and limped and all over the house. And then next thing you know, I was on the bus. I'm wearing the halftime costume mother made for me. My head is made out of an oatmeal box. I look like a neat weight. I glanced my eyes all around the room. The children in room one looked very cute. The kickball players were wearing marching, matching red and white shirts. All of their shirts said, we are number one. The cheerleaders matched each other. They had they had on red skirts and white sweaters. I looked at Sheldon. His daddy's band jacket was way too giant. His band head came over his ear. He looked like a neat wig too. I put my head down on my desk. Betty Glum, my oatmeal box, had fell on the floor. May study to laugh. I hope that doesn't happen when you juggle today, Junie Jones. She said, Betty Minish. She raised her eyebrows. You're going to juggle, aren't you? I didn't answer that girl. Instead, I turn my head to the wall and I close my eyes and I wish it to turn invisible. I wish it and wished with all my might. Finally, I opened my eyes again and I turned back to May and I stuck out my tongue at, at her. She stuck out hers right back at me. I did a sigh. Bad news. I wasn't invisible. At 10 o'clock, we went to the softball field. There were a million jillion parents there, I bet. My then daddy was sitting on the first row of the bleachers. Grandpa and Grandma Miller were sitting right next to them. They were holding my baby brother named Ollie. He was mooing. All of them waved at me. I did not wave back because I was still trying to be invisible. Of course, me and Sheldon sat down together. He looked at the people in the bleachers. 
Then he quick turned around again, and he pulled his band head over his face. And he giggled very nutty. Please stop doing that, I said. You are just calling attention to ourselves. She had to put a symbol on his head. I rolled my eyes. A dumb guy. Then I hit my face in my skirt, and I didn't watch the tournament. There were two games going on at once. Room 1 was playing Room 2, and Room 3 was playing Room 4. I could hear the cheerleader cheering real loud. Room 1 was winning, I think. I listened to the cheering for a very long time. Then all of a sudden, I heard lots of whistles and yelling. I looked up to see what happened. Eh? Oh no, oh no, Room 1 had just won the first game. Now it was time for half time. Mr. Scary came over to get us. I tried to hide behind Shadow, but Mr. Scary already saw me. He said it's perfectly normal for me to be nervous, but I should just relax and try to enjoy myself. This is going to be a day you'll never forget, he told me. My skin did a shiver. Yeah, only that's exactly what I'm afraid of, I said. After that, Mr. Scary took me and Sheldon by our hands. He walked us to the field. My legs felt like a silly string. Mr. Scary went out to the microphone and he made an announcement to the people. Welcome to our halftime show, everyone. While room one and four are resting for the final game of tournament, two of my students will present some very special entertainment. He winked at me and Sheldon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am proud to present the musical genius of Sheldon Potts and the unique talent of Juni B. Jones. As soon as he finished, he pointed at me and Sheldon, and he gave us the signal to go. Sheldon did a whimper. He did not move. I looked at his face. It was the color of paste. Mr. Scary hurried over, and he gave Sheldon a nudge. Okay, you two, go, 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 he said. Take off. Very slow, I raised up my wood block, and I hit it with my drumstick real light. Tap louder. You've got to play louder, Junie B, and with a little bit of pep, okay? I took a big breath. Tap, tap, tap. Mr. Scary nodded. Yes, yes, better. I swallowed hard. Tap, tap, tap. He gave me a thumbs up. That's it, Junie B, that's it. Keep it up. I keep it up. Tap, 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 tap. Then pretty soon my fist started tapping too. And then they marched me right onto the field. I looked behind me. Shadow was still standing on the sideline. His face looked even pastier. I ran back there and tugged on his arm. Hey, come on, Shadow. Let's go. I said, Sheldon, the plop down in the grass. No, no, I can't, I can't, he said. I made a fist at that boy. Oh, yes, you can, Sheldon. You got to, you've got to go. This whole stupid show was your idea, and I'm not doing it by myself. After that, I helped Sheldon stand up, and I pulled him onto the field. That's when the worst history thing of all happened, because room two started laughing their heads off uh, at us. And it was the meanest laughing I ever even heard of. Sheldon froze very stiff. He stood there like a statue and he wouldn't even budge. Then all of a sudden, crash! He dropped his cymbals. And he ran across the playground as fast as a speedboat. One of the teachers ran after him, but Sheldon zoomed faster and faster. Then he ran behind the swing set. He circled around the monkey bar. He kept running and running till he was all the way behind the school. And what do you know, Sheldon never came back! Oh my goodness. Chapter 9, plops. Room 2 laughed even harder. Rooms 3 and 4 laughed too. I hated that mean noise. I hated it. Tears came in my eyes. My nose started sniffling very much. I hanged my head so no one could see. And ha, huh, that's when I spotted them. Sheldon's symbol. They were still lying in the grass right next to my feet. I quick picked them up and I crashed them together. So I wouldn't hear the laughing. And it worked. I tell you, it worked. I couldn't hear the laughing at all. That's how come I crashed them again and again and again until my arms got tired. And guess what? When I finally stopped, no one was even laughing anymore. I felt a little better. Symbols are very enjoyable. After that, I stood in the middle of the field and I rocked back and forth on my feet, very thinking because I didn't know what to do next. Just then I heard shouting, boarding, yelled uh, uh, a voice. Don't just stand there, do something, yelled a different voice. I looked up. The boys who sh shouted were being taken away by their teacher. But it was already too late. More than but tears were coming in my eyes. Mr. Scary started coming to get me. My brain began to panic because this was the stupidest halftime show I ever even saw. The children started laughing again. They would be laughing at me for the rest of their life probably. Then all of a sudden, my eyes glanced over to Sheldon's microphone. And what do you know? A brand new idea popped into my head. And it's called, Hey Baby, I Could Sing a Song, just like Sheldon was going to do. 
I grinned real big. Yes, yes. I could sing The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow from the hit musical Annie. Because I love that tune. I tell you. I hurried over to the microphone. Then I opened up my mouth to sing. Only I couldn't actually remember how that song started. Mr. Scary was getting closer. My brain panicked some more. Out of nowhere, I heard a plop. I looked down. Something had landed on the ground next to my butt. It looked, I looked closer. It was a flasky biscuit, I believe. Flaky. Plop, plop, plop. Two more biscuits and a small plum. So suddenly, there was another fuss in the stand. Two more kids were getting led away by their teacher. That's when I got it. That's when I figured out that those mini kids had thrown food at me. And throwing food is the biggest insult you can ever do. At first, my face turned red as a tomato. Then I felt myself getting mad. And I got madder, madder. And then I picked up those biscuits. I started to throw them back. Only all at once, my brain changed its mind. Instead of throwing them back, I put two of the biscuits in my right hand. I held the other biscuit in my left hand, and then I tossed them in the air, one by one, exactly like my juggle books at two, and then magic happened, I tell you, it did. It really did, because for just a few tiny seconds, I juggled those biscuits way high in the air. I juggled them as perfect as could be, and I cut them too. I cut all three of those flaky guys. And then the whole entire bleacher started to clap, and clap, and clap. And then they cheered and cheered and cheered. And the sound of that noise was uh, better than the, the best daydream I ever, ever had. I did a bow. The people kept on clapping. I did another bow. Then I picked up Sheldon's symbol. Then I marched right off the field. Then I guess what? It was the proudest dawn moment of my life. The rest of the day was a joy. We had a happy party, and I smiled to my chicks hurt. So I wrote in my journal again. Dear first grade journal, we won the tournament. Room one won the whole entire kickball tournament. And so hooray, hooray. Mr. Scary let us have a party for the whole rest of the day. And guess what? They found Sheldon hiding behind the bush. He got scared, silly, apparently. Only finally he calmed himself down. Now he is back to his regular nutty self. Guess what else? I'm not even mad at him for the running away. Uh, if Sheldon didn't run away, I never would have juggled, probably. But then Daddy hugged me at the party. Daddy said I turned biscuit into lemonade. And that's a hood, I tell you. Then Mother said the best thing of all. She said, today, I was a star. And I really liked the sound of that. Yep, I really did. The end.